Hello, my name is Joseph. Today we're converting our Precision Matthews milling machine to CNC. Let's get started. Converting a machine to CNC is a simple three-step process. Step one was removing the lead screws, lead screw nuts, and hand wheels. This video will focus on step two, installing ball screws, ball nuts, and stepper motors. The conversion kit in this video was developed by myself over a six month period by disassembling this machine, measuring all of its dimensions, designing and modeling all the components, and repeating the process until I was satisfied with the end result. There's a link to this conversion kit in the video description. Let's take a look at the tools we'll be using in this video. We'll need an assortment of metric allen keys, pliers, flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers, 17 and 19 millimeter wrenches, tape, calipers, and a drill. Before we start installing hardware, let's talk about bearings for a minute. This kit uses angular contact bearings, which is a significant upgrade from the deep groove bearings I used on my first conversion project. Angular contact bearings come in sets of two. It is very important that they are installed with the correct orientation. They sometimes have color-coded seals and markings to identify orientation. Regardless, you should always check your angular contact bearings with calipers. We'll simply measure the thickness of the outer race on each side of the bearing. One side will be thinner than the other side. We'll mark the thinner side. This is the side of the bearing that must face out or away from the flange. We'll measure and mark all three sets. We'll start with the Z-axis. Verify that the Z-axis is securely locked. Partially thread in the four screws that attach the ball nut to the Z-axis ball screw bracket. Rotate the ball nut so that it sits at the end of the ball screw. We need to be careful not to unthread the ball nut all the way. Doing so would unpack the ball nut. Now we'll insert the ball screw assembly into the column as shown here. We can now thread the four screws in all the way and tighten them. Bolt the ball nut bracket to the Z-axis saddle using the socket head screw. Don't tighten it all the way yet as we still need to align the ball nut. Mount the two standoffs to the Z-axis base using four socket head screws. Pay careful attention to their orientation. We want these two curved recesses to face each other. They match the circular protrusion on the stepper motor face. We also want these two threaded holes mounted towards the front of the column. They are used to mount an optional homing switch. Next, we'll wrap some tape around our ball screw. Slide an angular contact bearing over the end of our ball screw with its mark side facing down. And now we'll slide the Z-axis flange over the bearing and insert the second bearing with its mark side facing up. Thread on the locking nut. We'll carefully preload the angular contact bearings using a wrench and pliers. The tape keeps the pliers from marring the ball screw. The flange should spin freely with no binding. It is better to err on the side of too little preload than too much preload. We'll lock the nut to the ball screw shaft by tightening the grub screw and remove the tape. Lower the Z-axis flange flush with the top of the column and loosely thread in the four socket head screws. Attach a drill securely to the end of the ball screw and unlock the Z-axis while holding the drill. The drill keeps the ball screw from spinning freely and dropping the head when you unlock the Z-axis. We can now use the drill to raise the head, being careful to make sure the head clears the flange. Lock the Z-axis before removing the drill. Now butt the front face of the flange against the head of the machine while tightening its four mounting screws. This aligns the flange. We can now tighten the ball nut bracket socket head screw. Now we're ready to install the stepper motor. Slide the coupler over the end of the ball screw. Align the stepper motor seat it into place and secure it to the standoffs with the four socket head screws. The coupler is locked in place with its two clamping screws. We'll now install the cover plate on the column. The hole in the cover plate provides convenient access for lubricating our ball screw. With the z-axis finished and the head raised out of the way, we can now move on to the y-axis. We'll start by bolting the y-axis bracket securely to the ball nut. Rotate the ball screw so that the ball nut is approximately 5 inches from the end of the ball screw. Now insert the ball screw assembly under the saddle and through the hole in the base of the milling machine. 
We'll thread the socket head screw into the ball nut bracket, but we won't tighten it all the way since we still need to align the ball nut. We'll use calipers to probe our ball screw at two points as we slide the saddle back and forth. Once the two points are within a few hundredth millimeter of each other, our ball nut is aligned and we can lock the ball nut bracket socket head screw. A helpful tip is to hold the calipers in place with a piece of double sided tape. Next, we'll wrap some tape around our ball screw and slide an angular contact bearing over the end of the ball screw with its marked side facing back. We'll slide the Y axis flange over the bearing, insert the second bearing with its marked side facing forward, and thread the coupler onto the end of the ball screw. We'll pull the coupler apart and carefully preload the angular contact bearings using a screwdriver shaft and pliers. The flange should spin freely with no binding. We'll lock the coupler to the ball screw by tightening its clamping screw and remove the tape. Push the other half of the coupler back on. Now we'll slide the saddle back until the flange butts against the base of the milling machine. Loosely thread in the two socket head screws. Translate the saddle forward by spinning the coupler. We'll level the flange and lock it in place with the two socket head screws. We should be able to easily translate the saddle back and forth by hand without any binding. Make additional adjustments as needed. Next we'll install the stepper motor. Insert the axle of the stepper motor into the coupler. Use firm pressure to seat the axle all the way forward and clamp it in place. Separate the coupler by pulling the stepper motor back. Align the spacer with the face of the stepper motor. Rejoin the coupler and securely mount the stepper motor using the four socket head screws. We're now ready to move onto the X axis. We'll start by bolting the ball nut to the X axis ball nut bracket. Spin the ball screw so that the ball nut is roughly at the midpoint of the ball screw. We'll now slide the stepper motor coupler onto the end of the ball screw and lock it in place using the clamping screw. The stepper motor can be mounted on either end of the table. We'll mount the stepper motor on the right, so we'll mount the ball screw bracket so that the motor coupler is to our right. Before tightening the screws, we'll use calipers to align the ball screw perfectly square with the saddle. We want the measurement at the left and right side of the saddle to be within a few hundredth millimeter of each other. Now tighten the ball nut bracket screws down firmly. We'll clean the ways and slide the table back onto the saddle, being careful not to bump the ball screw. Insert the gib and lock it in place using the gib adjustment screw. The table should have no side to side play and should easily slide back and forth. We may need to adjust the gib. If there is side to side play, we should also check the Y axis gib adjustment. We'll wrap some tape around the end of our ball screw. Slide an angular contact bearing over the end of the ball screw with its marked side facing back. Next, we'll slide the X axis flange over the bearing and insert the second bearing with its marked side facing forward. Thread on the locking nut. We'll carefully preload the angular contact bearings using a wrench and pliers. The flange should spin freely with no binding. We'll lock the nut to the ball screw shaft by tightening the grub screw and remove the tape. Mount the flange to the table using the two socket head screws. Level the flange and tighten the screws all the way. Push the bearing cover in place. Next we'll mount our X-axis stepper motor. Insert the axle of the stepper motor into the coupler. Use firm pressure to seat the axle all the way forward and clamp it in place. Separate the coupler by pulling the stepper motor back. Mount the stepper motor flange to the table using two socket head screws. We won't tighten them yet. Rejoin the coupler and mount the stepper motor to the flange using the four socket head screws. Level the motor support flange and raise it up slightly to compensate for the weight of the stepper motor. We'll lock it in place by tightening the two socket head screws. Next, we'll install the Z and Y axis covers. And we're done! The third and final step in the CNC conversion is setting up our controller. We'll save that for a future video. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Your support makes it possible for me to create these videos. Now go, make something great.